right, hallelujah. Welcome back to the channel. So glad you could join us. Open with me, if you would, in your Bibles to Luke, the 14th chapter. Luke 14, we will be reading verses 25 through 33. Luke 14, say amen when you get there. Luke what? 14, 1 4. 14th chapter of Luke, starting in verse 25. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and there went, a, excuse me, and there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily, after he, laid, he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth <clears throat> whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage, and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. <clears throat> Father God, I come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, I humble myself in your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, I am dependent totally upon you. I cannot do this without you, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask you to take control. Fill me with your anointing. Let your fire be upon me. Breathe life upon this word. And let me speak your words. In your words alone, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so, I used to be into martial arts. And our Grand Master, he had a philosophy he called head of, a uh, head of a dragon and tail of a snake. And they had a they had a dragon painted on the wall inside of the Taekwondo school. The head was the biggest part of the dragon. And the rest of the body was slender. Okay. So people would come into martial arts and they would have all these grandiose aspirations. Oh, I want to be a black belt. I want to be a master. I want to be a grandmaster. Much like with Christianity, a lot of people start off, oh, I want to be, I want to be a preacher. I want to be a prophet. I want to be an apostle. And on and on and on, right? And then we watch them when they come in. <coughs> Excuse me. They come in as a head of a dragon. Big full of life, full of what they want to do. Have you ever seen a, a snake slither through the grass? And you're looking and you can only see one part of the snake and it almost looks like he's not moving. And then all at once you see, shh, there goes the tail. And the snake's gone. And that's the way people start off so many times when they start to do something. They start off big, full, and strong, hard charging. And then little by little, they just fade away. Why? Because they did not consider the cost of what they were taking on. They didn't think, can I stick to this? And that's what Jesus is talking about. And that's the title of my message tonight, is consider the cost. Facts that you must know about following Christ. Number one. There's going to be some things that you have to give up. You can't effectively follow Christ and keep doing the things that you were doing when you were in the world. You just can't do it. Um, for example, drinking and smoking and cursing. Those are things that you were doing when you got saved. Before you got saved, those are things that you shouldn't be doing now that you are saved. Because we want our lives to be an example. We want our lives to reflect 
Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus talked about them when men see your good works, they will glorify your Father which is in heaven. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So we have to make some changes. There are some things that have to be removed from our life. There are some things that we are going to have to stop doing. There are some places we may have to stop go. Number two, there are friends that you will have to forsake. The Bible says, "Be not equally un, uh, excuse me, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers." <clears throat> when they would plow in biblical times. They would take a couple of ox or oxen and they would put a yoke around their neck. Now the yoke was a piece of lumber that stretched out and it had a hole and a piece that would clamp under. So they would have a piece on the top and the bottom of the neck. Now if you take a, an ox and you yoke it with a donkey, there's going to be a couple of problems there. One, one thing that's going to happen is that the... Um, can you uh, straighten the camera, please? Turn it. You're cutting my top of my head off. Turn it that way. Wrong way. Turn it that way. Okay. A little bit more. Just, just sit here more. Hallelujah. Thank you. That was going to bother me. <laughs> Thank you. Um... So if you have uh, an ox and a donkey, and they're on the same yoke, one's going to be up here on a higher level. The other one's going to be down here. And that's going to make a problem. It's going to make a drag. Now, donkeys are notoriously stubborn. So while the ox is trying to go forward, the donkey's going to be fighting the yoke. He's not going to want to go. And this is what happens when we have friends that are in the world. We're on a higher plane than they are. Raise that camera up just a hair. It's still cutting the top of my head off, please. And thank you very much. And so, Amos 3.3, 3, he says, a little bit too much. Go down. Keep going. Right there. Very good. Thank you so much. God bless you. Um, Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? So, and there's the old saying also, birds of a feather flock together. Maybe you can be a good influence to a person, but if you're hanging around with the wrong people, people are going to see you and they're going to associate you with the other person and the things that they do. Now, Jesus was notorious about this, but this was Jesus. And we are not Jesus. Jesus was a friend to sinners and harlots and publicans and so on and so forth. We can do it in limited amounts, but we should not be hanging around with people that are not like us. We should need to be in fellowship with other Christians, really. <clears throat> now, my mother always said that you can't go into a pig pen and give a pig a bath. Because what's going to end up happening is you and the pig both are going to end up covered in mud. Now, I had a friendship that God told me to end many, many years ago. And I didn't want to end it because this was my friend, you know. Um, he was almost a lifelong friend. But every time I was around this person, bad things <laughs> would happen. And, um, and I was disobedient in that. And I really believe that that caused my entire life to be so off track. I mean, I was living in a, in, well, sometimes in the Taekwondo school or I was living in an RV. But when I finally decided to obey God and cut ties with this person, God started pouring his blessings out on me. God let me meet this beautiful, beautiful woman here that I'm married to. Blessed us with this beautiful home. And I believe it is because I was finally obedient. So what is it that you're not giving up that's holding you back? That's not letting you have all of what God has for you? Um, 
So yes, first or second Corinthians six fourteen says. Um, yeah, okay, I just want to make sure I'm in the right place. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Because when light comes in, darkness is expelled. That's it. Number three, after you end these relationships, you're going to have to break ungodly soul ties with them. Now, you might say, what is an ungodly soul tie? I'm glad you asked. I'll tell you what an ungodly soul tie is. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. Um, so a biblical example of an ungodly soul tie can be found in Proverbs 22, 24. He says, make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man. Thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul Have you ever met somebody that um, maybe they acted a particular way and they got a new friend and then pretty soon this person's entire personality has changed anybody ever known anybody like that that's because that person developed an ungodly soul tie with somebody or even a godly soul tie could do that. I mean, you know, we have, there are godly soul ties. Jonathan and David had a godly soul tie. The Bible says that their souls were knit together as one. So, but when you have that soul tie, you may actually, especially if it's an ungodly soul tie, you may take on certain personality traits of that other person. You may pick up some habits of that other person. Because when you have that soul tie, those demonic influences can flow back and forth for you. Okay. So you may have to break some ungodly soul ties. Number four, there are some behaviors that you will need to stop. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And I love this next verse. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Now, I talked about this last week. That there was somebody that I told them, you don't really want deliverance. This person, I've been trying to get them to go through deliverance. And I just said, you don't want it. You want to want it, but you really don't want it. And what I mean by that is maybe he's considering the cost. What he's going to have to stop doing. And he's saying, well, I want to get to the place where I want to stop doing this. But he really doesn't want to stop. And I think that's a big part of our problem. A lot of times we don't really want to walk the straight and narrow, but we want to want to. We want to have the desire to, but we just don't want to give up some things. Mm. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, they don't want to behave godly as much as they want to want to. And that's the problem with mostly with immature Christians. Mm -hmm. And we just have to pray that they get some maturity. Now, does God want you to be perfect? Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's... This is a good question. Matthew 5, 48. Um, Jesus says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. But now, there's a, an interesting little fact that I'm going to share with you. He uses the word perfect twice in the English. Mm -hmm. But in the Greek, those are not the same words. Hmm. In the English, he said perfect. Now, the word Greek, uh, the word in the Greek is teleos, and it means complete in various applications of labor, growth, mental, moral, and full of, uh, or moral character, full of age, of full age, excuse me. Um, I didn't have the other word down, but the other one actually means perfection. 
Okay? So the other one is more direct. In other words, Jesus say, is saying, don't miss the mark. Aim for the mark. He's not expecting that we're going to hit the mark every time. What can I do? Number one, real simple. Stop doing the things of the world. John 8, 11, This is the woman that was taken in adultery. And they came to Jesus and said, Hey, we caught this woman in adultery in the very act. Now Moses told us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? Now see, this was the Bible says uh, that this they did to try to accuse him. Why? Because there was a law that the Jews were not allowed to put somebody to death because of their law. So what they were trying to do is get Jesus to say stoner. And then they could have him send him, turn him over to the centurions, okay? So Jesus, he stooped down on the ground and he started writing in the sand. And I would just imagine that he was writing Diane, Betty, Martha. And he said, let he that is without sin cast the first stone. Then he started hearing the rocks fall on the ground and one by one they left. And then... Jesus said to her in Matthew 5, uh, excuse me, in John 8, 11, he, or well, before that he said, Has it, where are your accusers at? Does no man accuse, her, accuse you? And she said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So he didn't tell her, go back and do the same thing and try not to get caught next time. He said, go and sin no more. Now that word sin, the word sin appears 447 times in the Bible. And in this particular time, remember what I said about missing the mark. This time the word sin in the Greek is hamartano. And it means to miss the mark, to err, especially morally, false, offend, trespass, or sin. And it's interesting, and in verse 7, when Jesus said, He that is without sin, the word used for sin there is anamartetos, and it means to be sinless. Number two, what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to bind the devil. Um, we're going to share some of these uh, with those that are going through deliverance, but we have a... We have daily warfare prayers that we do where we're binding devils. You got to do this every day, folks, because the devil is out to trip us up. He's out to make fools of us. He's out to embarrass Christ. And we need to embarrass. I like the way my friend Linda, Linda Freed says it. She says, we need to embarrass sin before it embarrasses us. And she got that, I believe, from Jesse Duplantis. But... Um, Bind up the devil. Bind up any spirits that are hindering you in your walk. In Matthew 8.18, 8, or excuse me, Matthew 18.18, 18, Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So you need to bind up the devil, especially when you're starting your day. Now, what, number four, or was it number four? Number three, you may need to go through deliverance. Before I go any further into this, there are deliverance ministries that if you sneeze, oh, that's a devil. If you burp, oh, that's a devil. If you pass gas, oh, that's a devil. Give me a Pentecostal break. Okay, because yes, when you go through deliverance, a demonic spirit may leave through a sneeze, a burp, passing of gas. It may come through your eyes watering or crying. But every time you burp or pass gas, it is not a devil. Let's get real, folks. There is not a devil hiding behind every single bush. Everything is not a spirit. And I was speaking to you guys about this before service. Some behaviors are due to other things. Poor nutrition, lack of sleep, stress. Now, if you have a behavior that you just cannot stop, after you've applied the blood of Jesus, after you've bound up devils, after you've 
you know, prayed till you're blue in the face and you're still doing it, then you probably have a spirit that needs to be dealt with. Um, now, uh, I'll give you an example of this. Now, I was associate pastor of Christ Cathedral, and um, I had a smoking problem. In fact, they used to call our church, when it was a Baptist church, they used to call it the church with the puff of smoke on the corner, <laughs> because there were a lot of people that went to that church and smoked. And I, here I was, the associate pastor of this church, and I was bound up with cigarettes. Senior pastor and I, we got together, we anointed cigarettes with oil. I went and bought more. We flushed them down the toilet. I went and bought more. We tore them, tore them up. I went and bought more. We burned them on the barbecue grill. We, I went and got more. I, we did every hokey religious thing you could think of. And I would still go and get more cigarettes. I, I was smoking three packs of cigarettes a day. And I came into service one Sunday. And before service, there was some lady I'd never met before. Um... She was praying for people. And I said, well, I'll get her to pray for my brother for salvation. And I went up. And she goes, we'll pray for your brother, but let's get you taken care of first, honey. You've got a spirit of, of addiction in you. You smoke like a chimney, but God's <laughs> going to set you free right now. She cast this spirit out of me, and I went to the ground vomiting air for a good three to five minutes. And that was 1989. Do I smoke? Nope. I don't smoke. I haven't smoked since 1989. Praise God. Now, who the Son is has set free is free indeed. If you've got a problem with alcohol, tobacco, drugs, name it. God can set you free from it. If, if you want, call us. Email us. Pastor John at wellsoflifechurch.org Set up an appointment. We'll take you through deliverance. It ain't nothing but a thing for God. Number four. Walk in the Spirit. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So, spend some time walking after the Spirit, praying. You know, Paul talked about speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You know, something that I've been doing lately is when we go to bed at night, I'll take the TV. We have a smart TV, and I'll put Pandora on, and I will put it on Michael, uh, Michael, not Michael. Um, I was going to say Michael W. Smith. We put it on Terry McAllen in Praise and Worship, and we let it play overnight while we're sleeping. You can get some great peaceful sleep that way. So spend time in God's word spend time praying praying yourself up if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit pray in your prayer language but that's one of the things we need to do is walk in the spirit if we walk in the spirit we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh number five separate yourself for a time so you can fast or pray or you can simply turn off the television Facebook YouTube Instagram, Twitter. Am I missing any? Can anybody think of anyone else that maybe that needs to get turned off? Turn it off and spend some time with God. You know, fasting, fasting food is wonderful. But not everybody can do that. And the whole purpose of fasting is not to make God feel sorry for you because you're hungry. It's the same reason why we need to turn the TV off. Because we need to separate ourselves. Pull ourselves away from some of the things of the world. And just get in the presence of God and stay there. Anything that keeps you from spending time with God. Put it to a side for a time. Um, when you get along with God without all the distractions in our lives. This is the beginning of walking in the Spirit. James 4 8 says draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you cleanse your hands ye sinners and purify your hearts ye double-minded I always like that draw nigh unto God and he'll draw nigh unto you I always like to say get real with God and God will get real with you number six be quick to repent if, if you've done something wrong you need to just say God I, I messed up 
I try to do that sometimes as something's coming out of my mouth. I'm like, oh, God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that about that person that cut me off. Please forgive me. Okay, so, you know, we all mess up. It's like I told somebody something a few weeks ago. I said something about crossing the white line, and the person said, oh, you mean you sinned? And I said, yeah, and I probably will again. <laughs> you know, being a Christian doesn't mean that you're perfect. It just means that you're forgiven. Um, so be quick to repent. John, 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. And lastly, number seven, be quick to forgive. We need to be quick to repent, but we need to be quicker to forgive. Okay? We want God to forgive us. Think of all the stuff that we've done. and We want God to give us a blank slate. Forgive us for all of this. But when it comes to somebody that offends us, hello, <laughs> We need to be just as quick to forgive other people. Um, Matthew 6, 14. Jesus says, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. So let's be quick to forgive. Let's be quick to repent. Okay? And the repentance isn't going to do you any good unless you do the forgiveness. You want to ask God to forgive you, you need to start forgiving other people. So I want you to bow your heads with me. If you have never made a commitment to follow Christ, tonight is your night. I want to ask you to say this prayer with me. If you have drifted away, maybe you're not where you once were, come back to the cross tonight. Give your heart to Christ. Say this prayer with me. My Father, My Father be, merciful be merciful to me a sinner. Father God, I know I have sinned. Father God, I know I have sinned. And I know it was my sin, I know it's my sin that put Jesus on that cross. Jesus in Lord Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Make me a new creation. Let me live my life for you. Be my Lord. My Savior. And my soon coming King. I ask this in Jesus name. Amen. Folks if you said that prayer tonight. I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God. The Bible says that the angels of God rejoice. When one sinner repents. But there's a party going on in heaven right now. Just because of you. Um, listen. If you haven't done so already. Subscribe to the channel. Don't be so quick. <laughs> subscribe to the channel. Give us a like. Share our videos with your friends. And I'm going to um, put a link down in the description. We have a GoFundMe. That we just started. Uh, we're looking to get a tent. To hold revival services in. And I will put a link in the description where you can go and see our GoFundMe and contribute to that if you like. Um, so God bless you. We love you and we'll see you real soon. Hallelujah.